And today we're going to talk about the science of tools for fat loss. I think we all know people who can eat a ton and never seem to gain any body fat or people who seem to eat very little and seem to gain body fat very easily. And I was always intrigued by that. And it turns out there are a number of different factors that relate to that. Simply moving around a lot, even if those are subtle movements, greatly increases the amount of energy that you burn. So let's talk about how to activate the nervous system in ways that it promotes more liberation, movement, mobilization of fat, and more oxidation of fat. How many calories you ingest versus how many calories you burn is the fundamental and most important formula in this business of fat loss and weight management in general. There's simply no way around the fact that if you ingest far more calories than you burn, you're likely to gain weight. But the calories burned portion is strongly influenced by a number of things that you can control. Belief effects, just thinking, can impact the effects of things like exercise on weight loss. These are just incredible results. So this is remarkable and it speaks to the power of the nervous system and the power of belief in governing aspects of our body and our physiology that one would otherwise think were outside our conscious control. When you look at different diets, you look at low fat diets, high fat diets, keto diets, intermittent fasting, provided people stick to their particular diet, it doesn't really matter which diet you follow. Adherence, however, is always an issue. If you can't stick with something, then it's not very worthwhile. So let's talk about movement and the more traditional kinds of movement, aka exercise. So rather than think about weight training versus cardiovascular exercise, I think the most simple way, the most fluid way to have this conversation about exercise and fat loss is in terms of three general types of training. So we can think about high, medium, and low intensity exercise, so high intensity interval training, sprint interval training, or moderate intensity continuous training. Digging through all the studies on, on this, we're finally starting to arrive at a consensus of when is best to do exercise and what types of exercise to do if your goal is fat loss. There's some great stuff out there and there's some really terrible information out there and there's a lot of controversy. Fat metabolism is something that happens systemically throughout the body at about or after 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise. There's a switchover point. You will burn far less fat from the 90 minute point onward than you would if you had gone into the training fast. Now, 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise is a lot. There are also studies that point to the fact that you don't have to wait to 90 minutes in order to get this enhanced fat burning effect. The studies I was able to find and that look to me like quality peer reviewed studies with no company bias or no product bias of any kind point to the fact that if one does high intensity training, well then the switchover point in which you can burn more fat if you go into that fasted comes earlier. The nervous system and the role of the brain and other neurons has been vastly overlooked in the discussion about losing fat. So your nervous system is the master controller of this process, and it plays a strong role in the calories out, the calories burned component. Remember, your nervous system, which includes your brain and your spinal cord, and all the connections that they make with the organs of the body, governs everything. It's the on switch and the off switch for your immune system. It's the on switch and the off switch, it turns out, also for fat burning. Your body fat of various kinds, and there are several kinds of body fat, are actually innervated by neurons. Neurons connect to your body fat and can change the probability that that body fat will be burned or not. These cells in our body, they are there as fuel for the furnace of our body, which is our metabolism. The nervous system, neurons, has the opportunity to turn up the intensity of that furnace. It has the opportunity to increase the amount of heat that we produce and therefore the amount of energy that we burn. And people who overeat, the people who can have the, the second or the third donut or donuts at all and don't seem to put on weight to the same degree, they are people that move around a lot even when seated. They are people that will often move their limbs very quickly as well. Fidgeting movements, staccato movements, standing up, walking around, pacing, all the sort of nervous activities that we're so critical of in other people and sometimes in ourselves are actually 
mobilizing and oxidizing a lot of fat and a lot of energy. In 2015, and again in 2017, there have been studies that have, been, have explored this using some modern metabolic tracking. And indeed, simply moving a lot, being a fidgeter, bouncing your knee, standing up and pacing, what's called NEAT, N-E-A-T, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, led to considerable amounts of fat loss and weight loss. There even have been studies that have explored other things that correlate with fidgeters. Fidgeters stand up very quickly at the end of a lecture, or they start to gather their things very quickly, whereas non-fidgeters don't. And while this probably won't compensate for chronic overeating, the caloric burn from this is considerable and very likely can offset a, you know, a, a meal that had excessive calories or a kind of steady state of accumul of eating too much. There's clearly a tool to export from this, which is that you can increase the amount of calories burned without having to go on additional long runs. You might say, well, how could these little micro movements lead to so much caloric burn? And that's where it really gets interesting. These little fidgety movements, the engagement of certain aspects of our musculature that are nothing like exercise. It's not these large coordinated or rhythmic uh, body movements, but rather subtle little bits of fidgety movement or those low level movements. They trigger epinephrine release from these neurons and they stimulate the mobilization of fat. And then that fat is oxidized at higher rates. If you're really interested in burning calories and you already exercise, you want to burn more, or you don't have the opportunity to exercise, or you're averse to exercise for whatever reason, what's the protocol? Fidget. So for people that are overweight who are kind of averse to exercise, fidgeting might actually be a good entry point. I do hope that people are exercising regularly because it's so important for other aspects of brain and body health. But nonetheless, we all, we are all time limited and we are not all so ready to embrace exercise. Just the use of something like low level movement and it's almost like a tremor, but also these like short, small fidgety movements. This has nothing to do with exercise in the traditional form. And yet 800 to 2500 calories per day, that's a considerable amount of fat oxidized. Now it should make sense why shivering is one of the strongest stimulus stimuli that one can incorporate to stimulate fat loss. So in recent years, there's been a growing interest in the use of cold for various things like improving stress tolerance, improving metabolism, recovery from exercise. Cold causes the release of adrenaline from your adrenals and it causes the release of epinephrine from these neurons that connect to fat. And there are several ways that you can use shivering, you can leverage shivering, and you can leverage cold to accelerate fat loss, but you have to do it correctly. And most of the people that are using cold and frankly suggesting cold as a means to increase metabolism fat loss are suggesting the exact wrong protocol. It is shivering itself that causes the brown fat to increase your burning, your burn rate and your metabolism. If you get into cold water or an ice bath or a cold day and you try and remain calm and resist shivering, you actually short circuit this mechanism for increasing brown fat thermogenesis. Cold exposure does several things. Making ourselves cold can allow us to build up mental resilience. And I find this fascinating. I wish more people knew about it, which is why I'm telling you about it today. 